All right, y'all, welcome back. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be talking about unnecessary rebuilds and also Docker ignore if we got time. However, before we get to that, I also wanna mention that I'm using an IDE. Someone in my last video, I believe it was, they recommended to use an IDE and I thought it was a good idea. It makes it a little bit easier to read with you know, a little bit prettier formatting. And it also creates a more realistic development environment. So either way, I'm using WebStorm. However, if you wanna follow along with any IDE that you want, or you can continue using Nano or Vim or whatever in the console, then that's fine too. All right, now with all that said, let's just go ahead and first off, we're just gonna start the project just to run it and make sure that you know we don't get any new errors since we did swap environments. So on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and Docker run. And of course we need to port map just like we did before localhost 8080 to the containers port 8080. And then it is just called the new Boston Bucky's website. Go ahead and hit enter and okay, listen now port 8080 and check it out. So this is our beautiful website right now, Hey Now Brown Cow. But the thing is that, I don't know if I told you guys this, but this is actually placeholder text. And that is because this website is actually gonna be all about bacon. Boy, do I love bacon. So of course we don't really need hey now brown cow. So what I'm gonna do instead is just give them a big old bacon right when they hit the homepage, you know, gotta get them in the mood of loving bacon. So updated that. Okay, it looks like it didn't work actually. Okay, this is, yeah, the file saved, everything is good. And let me just try that again. Huh, okay, so having a bit of an issue here. I am updating my source code. However, when I go back and look at the website and refresh it, nothing is updating. So what is going on right here? Well, it turns out that whenever we update our source code, then what we need to do is we need to rebuild our image. So I'm just gonna close down that container. And just to make sure that, you know, what I just told you is correct, let's go ahead and we'll do Docker build and then we'll just tag it again as the new Boston Bucky's website in the build context. Again, it's the same. So just gonna hit period. Okay, that was going fast. It's looking like this last step run NPM install is actually taking a long time. Huh, so that's interesting. But either way, uh, let's just go ahead and run this again and see if the website actually updated. Okay. So this is a good thing. It now, after we rebuilt it, it updated the website to bacon. And okay, what does this mean? So what this means is that anytime we have a change in our source code, then we're gonna need to rebuild the image. All right, so that's, it's feeling like kind of a pain already, almost slowing down our development process a bit. But another thing, before we get into figuring out how to fix that, another thing that I noticed here is that whenever we ran, this step of rebuilding our image, then what happened is I noticed that, okay, this step is cached, this step went pretty fast right here. However, on this step right here, run npm install, it looked like it took three seconds. So it appears what is happening is that anytime we make any small change to our source code, even if it's completely unrelated to which packages we require or which dependencies we need to install, I mean, even if we make this small change from hey now brown cow to bacon, it is causing Docker to essentially have to reinstall all of these NPM dependencies. So why is that the case? Because to me, that seems very inefficient. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at how this build process works. So check it out. Whenever Docker builds an image from a Docker file, and by the way, this content right here I essentially just took everything in the Docker file and just split it out into little components that I can move around. So anyways, this is the contents of the Docker file in case you are you know, just uh, trying to follow my diagram here. So now let's go ahead and take a look at this build process in a little bit more detail. So Docker images are built in layers and each layer is essentially an instruction from this Docker file. So what the heck am I talking about? Well, it's easier if we kind of take it step by step and kind of see what's going on in the background. So whenever we want to build this image, 
then what's gonna happen is Docker is gonna start with our base image and it's gonna create a container from that. Now with this container, Docker is then going to run this first statement. And after it runs this, it's going to stop the container and then it's gonna save the changes. And then with essentially this updated container, it is going to generate a new image from that. Now with this new image, and this sounds uh, a little bit redundant, but then with this new image, Docker is going to spin up another container from this image, and then this process is essentially going to repeat. So Docker is gonna run this statement now, which is the copying of the source code over into the container. And then once this is done, it's gonna stop the container, save the changes, and then essentially with those changes, create a new image from it. And again, this process is gonna repeat for this instruction and also this instruction. So we essentially end up, actually let me copy that. We essentially end up with something like this for the final image. And once Docker builds the final image, then what it does is it creates the ID and it tags it with, well, whatever we tagged it. In this case, it was the New Boston slash Bucky's website. And that is essentially how you end up with this final image. Now, a very important thing to point out about this entire process, and this is actually why whenever we change source code, it was triggering uh, these NPM packages to reinstall again, is this. So whenever you rebuild a previously built image, the only layers that are rebuilt are the ones that have changed. So in the example that we saw, we changed some source code in our project. And that was right here. It said, hey, now brown cow, and we changed it to bacon. Now, since we changed that source code, then this step essentially changed. Because in this step, we're taking all of the source code and essentially copying it over to the container. So if the input changed, then the output changed. All right. So I guess it makes sense that for this step, it wasn't able to use the last cached version of this, but why did this change? Well, that's because of another bit of logic, and that is if one layer needs to be rebuilt, then Docker is also going to rebuild all of the subsequent layers, or essentially all the layers on top of it, or on the bottom of it, if you're looking at this one. So from Docker's point of view, whenever we said that, okay, Yes, we're updating this string of text to say, hey, now brown cow, we change it to say bacon now. And now we want to rebuild this image. What Docker said is, okay, what I'm gonna do is start with this base image and okay, work there, user app. It looks like this was all the same. So we can just use the cache version of this. And for this next step, copying, oh, oh, what is this? It looks like a bit of source code has changed. So this, is going to uh, require me to rerun this again. I can't just use the cache version, of course, because you know the input differs. And that also means that everything that comes after this, which is npm install and npm start, this also needs to be updated. Now, this makes sense in the sense of how Docker builds these containers and these images, so on and so forth. But from a development point of view, it's pretty inefficient to have to reinstall all the packages anytime we just change one bit of source code. So let's go ahead and pop back open our IDE and see if we can fix this somehow. Now, actually, before we do this, let's go ahead and just confirm our kind of working hypothesis here. And all right, so what I'm gonna do is just change this to uh, tuna. And then we are just gonna go ahead and build it again. And okay, so it looks like, yes, indeed, it did get the cached step for step number two. And then whenever we copied over the source code in every subsequent step, it did not use the cache version. Now, what I'm gonna do is just change nothing now and just rebuild this again. So, okay, well, that was a lot faster. It looks like everything took zero seconds. So in this case, it uses cache version of step number two and three and four. All right, so now that we are able to verify that I'm not lying <laughs> about this, let's go ahead and figure out how we can fix it. Well, let's think about this. So when do we actually need to rerun this step, run npm install? Well, we really only need to rerun it if the contents of our package.json has changed. Since if this has changed, then it essentially means that our dependencies have changed and it's probably a good time then to reinstall it. So how can we say that? 
Well, instead of just copying all of our files over and then running this after, we can kind of break it down into separate steps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this copy statement. I'm actually gonna copy it. So we are moving files over before this NPM install and also after. So why are we doing this? Well, check it out. Instead of copying all the files over right here, what I wanna do is I just wanna copy over one file and that's that package.json. So what these steps are saying now is this. After we run these commands, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be copying over this one file package.json to our container, and then we are gonna run this command to install those dependencies. Now, what we're gonna be doing here is after that's done, we're just gonna copy all other files over to this container, you know, just like we have before, and then start up a project from this command right there. So if everything is working correctly and our theory is correct, then what would happen now is that whenever we made updates to our source code, then whenever we went to rebuild our image, all of these steps right here should just be able to run off the old cached version. And then the only steps that should need to be updated are this step and subsequently this step right here. So let's go ahead and test our theory right now. So we'll put a tuna, we'll change it to corn. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and rebuild that. And all right, so this was interesting that even though we changed our entire Docker file around that this step was still cached. And since we reordered these, then these aren't gonna be cached, but take a note of what's happening right now. So step two is the only one that's cached. Three, four, and five are not, they're pretty much brand new. However, when I go and change this to Bacon and then rerun this again, just go ahead and clear this out and rebuild that, check it out. So now instead of having to reinstall all your dependencies, so on and so forth, step two, three, and five now are running off the cached version. And if you can see over here on the right, each one of those took zero seconds, which was an improvement from about that three seconds before. And the only real work that Docker needs to do is this last step where it copies over those remaining source code files Right now we only have one, but of course in a bigger project, we will have more than one. So now that we have our beautiful image built, let me actually go ahead and run this container and I'm actually gonna shell in and show you something. So I'm gonna do docker run and I wanna get an interactive shell. So what I'm gonna do is pass in that IT flag and then same thing as before, uh, what were we doing? 8080, map it to 8080. And it is the new Boston slash Bucky's website. And also I'm gonna uh, have shell is the default command. All right, so it looks like we are shelled into our container. And now let me just go ahead and list out all the files that we have. All right, copy it over the Docker file, uh, index.js or package.json, generate that lock file as well. Node modules, so this is a directory that essentially whenever we install our dependencies from package.json, then it sticks them all in node modules. All right, so this looks all good in, wait a minute, what's that idea? Wait, this is one of my IDE files, huh? Okay, so this is actually an issue. This directory right here, idea, where did it come from? Well, you may not see it in, I say, <laughs> may not, you definitely will not see it. However, check this out. All right, so in this tab right here, I'm shelled into the container in here. I'm just not shelled into anything. This is actually my uh, own local computer. And in this directory that I have my project set up as, I have this hidden folder right here, which is pretty much just some IDE settings. But either way, it wasn't something that I intended to copy over whenever I generated this image. So, Hmm, how do I say that, okay, in this step right here, whenever I copy everything over from the build context, which is essentially uh, this folder right here to the container to ignore any of those hidden files. Well, in this case, what we can do is we can create a Docker ignore file. And this is actually very simple. If you start it with a period and then you just write Docker ignore, this is actually works pretty much the same as git ignore files, if you're familiar with those. But essentially what it's gonna do is whenever Docker is generating these images, then it's going to look in the build context, which just means whatever directory 
your Docker files in right now. And it's going to look for a file called Docker Ignore. Now, if it finds a file called Docker Ignore, it's going to read the contents of this file. And the contents of this file is basically instructions to say these are the files or folders that you should ignore. And that's us talking to Docker. So in this case, what we're saying is, hey, Docker, whenever you copy everything over, ignore this idea file right here. All right, pretty cool. So now let's go ahead and see if this worked. So I'm going to exit out of here. And all right, so now let me just go ahead and build this again. And now when it's being built, this new image should be built with no idea files copied over. And to test that, let me just run that image, generate a container from it and shell in again. And now this time, if we do LS LA, we can now see that our idea directory is no longer copied over. And in fact, we did get this Docker ignore file, but that's all right. Point being that what I wanted to demonstrate is whenever you are essentially just trying to build an image and you have unwanted files or folders copied over, then you could stick them in a Docker ignore file. And well, it's pretty self-explanatory. Docker is gonna ignore those files whenever you run that process. All right, so in an upcoming video, what we're also gonna be doing is I'm gonna be showing you how to enable live reloading so that you don't have to manually build new containers every single time you wanna update your source code. But anyways, that is a topic for another tutorial. For now, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see y'all later.